Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana. And I'm Stefan. And today we're here to share with you how to overcome procrastination. This is something that many people struggle with and it can be very, very frustrating because you know you should do something and you're still not doing it. And it can hold you back from achieving the goals that you set for yourself or for building the business that you wanna build or just seeing the success that you wish to see in your life. And so today we wanna to share with you our best tips to help you overcome procrastination. So Stefan, why don't you start off by sharing what procrastination is and the psychology behind it? Yeah, so procrastination is when you know you should do something, but you're still not doing it. And the reason why you're not doing it is because in your mind you link pain to the process of doing it. So you link pain to taking action in your business. It might be overwhelming. You don't know how to get started. You don't know what to do. Or the task or the project that you do have to do is just so big in your mind that it's stressful, that it's intimidating, that you know it's gonna require a lot of effort and a lot of work. All of that is you linking in your mind pain to the process of doing it. And so instead you link pleasure, you pursue pleasure, what gives you instant and immediate gratification, such as playing video games, watching Netflix, watching YouTube videos, um, hanging out with your friends, whatever it is that you do that gives you pleasure as a way to escape and avoid doing what you know that you should do. Mm -hmm. So the way that you overcome that procrastination is you create an even greater pain. You create a consequence and a pain for not doing what you know that you should be doing. So right now you might link pain to taking action to build your business. That might be painful, I get it. I've been there, it's not easy to overcome that. But to overcome that, we gotta create an even greater pain. And that pain is what's gonna happen to you and your life if you don't do this. So one thing I can encourage you to do is take out a pen and paper, write down what it is that you know you should do, you're not doing it, you're procrastinating on it, and write out the consequence of not doing it. So for example, what this might look like is, let's say it's taking action to build your online business. What's the pain of not taking action? What's the consequence in your life if you don't take action to build your business? Well, number one, you're gonna have the pain of disappointment. You're gonna be letting yourself down, you're not gonna feel good about yourself, you're gonna have less confidence and trust in yourself because if you don't take action on something you said you're gonna do, a goal that you set for yourself, what reason do you have that you're gonna take action on the next goal, the next aspiration that you have in your life? In fact, a lot of people, they just kept keep procrastinating on their goals that they just give up. They have no point even setting goals because in the back of their mind, whenever they do set a goal, they're thinking, I already know that I'm not gonna do this. I already know that I'm gonna procrastinate, I'm not gonna follow through. So they have no confidence because their self-esteem is so low. And that's painful. That's painful to, to know that that's gonna lead to that pain in your life if you don't take action. Another pain might be that if you don't build your business, you're gonna struggle financially. You're not gonna be able to live life on your terms. You're not gonna be able to create the freedom, the financial security, that abundance that you truly want. You're gonna to continue to struggle and maybe even work for someone else that you're not pa passionate about what you do. You're working, building someone else's dream instead of your own dream, working a job, a J-O-B, just over broke for the rest of your life. You know, or maybe the pain is that 10 years from now when you have a family and kids and more responsibility, you're not gonna be able to provide for them. You're gonna have stress and anxiety around finances because you didn't take action to do, no, to do what you know that you should do. You know, it can go on and on and on, but you wanna think, what's the pain? What's the consequence if I don't do this? What's my life gonna be like? I might end up in debt and, and struggle even more financially in the future. Maybe there's gonna be something horrific that could happen at one point in my future where I lose my job or there's a tragedy or an emergency and it wipes me out financially and that's a pain that I'm gonna face if I don't take action and take care of this right now today. You wanna think about the pain because that pain will be fuel and motivate you mm -hmm. to take actions to avoid that pain from happening in your future. Mm -hmm. So when you link pain to not doing it, you can even ask yourself, what's my life gonna be like five years, 10 years from now if I don't take action? And even if you can exaggerate it, make it worse than it is, make it scarier than what it's gonna be. The, the, more that, the more pain you can link in your mind to not doing it, the more you're gonna take action with it. And it's almost like people that are overachievers in life, they have more fear in their life than people that are not achievers in their life because the overachiever, the, one of the reasons why they take so much action in their life and why they're so motivated is they're afraid of what their life's gonna be like if they don't do it. Hmm. Like for me, one of the you know, reasons why I work so hard, you work so hard, I'm terrified of ever being broke because I've been broke in my life, I never wanna go back. 
You know, my parents were broke, they went through a bankruptcy. For me, I link so much pain to that that it motivates me to take action right now in my life. Mm. Or for me, I, I'm afraid of ever getting cancer, ever getting heart disease. One in three people die from cancer and heart disease in the United States. I don't wanna be one of those statistics. The fear of that motivates me today to eat healthy, to work out, to take my supplements, to do whatever I gotta do to take care of my health, to avoid that fear from becoming a reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm terrified of going through a divorce. I'm terrified of you know, losing you in my life and that fear motivates me to be a better partner, to be more loving, to be more abundant, to be more giving, to meet your needs, to take care of myself, to be the best that I can be. Mm -hmm. So fear and pain can be a motivator. You just gotta redirect it. You gotta yeah. use it to your advantage. And the other piece I'll add to this as well is you use pain to motivate you, which is a great short-term motivator because we'll do anything to avoid pain. The best long-term motivator is pleasure. And so you also want to link in your mind pleasure to doing what you're procrastinating to do. So think about what's the pleasure that I'll get in my life by doing this? Yeah. What's all the gain? How will my life be better off for this? What will my life be like five or 10 years from now if I take action and do this and build my business? And you might write down and you might imagine how you know a year from now you're gonna be able to quit your job. You're gonna be able to wake up and have your own schedule and do what you want when you want. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have freedom. You're gonna do something that you love and they're passionate about. You're gonna have the time that you've always wanted to exercise, to read books, to travel, to hang out with your friends and your family or to take up some new, some new hobbies. Or you're gonna be able to buy whatever you want. You're gonna be able to buy that car that you've always wanted or to live in your dream house or to take care of yourself and enjoy luxurious things. Or you're gonna be able to give and contribute, not be held back because of fear and scarcity that you don't have enough, but you're gonna be able to give to causes that you're passionate about and that you believe in, right? The more that you link the pleasure to doing it, then the more that we're using the pain pleasure principle to get yourself into action. So if you can write this down, amazing, take out a pen and paper, write down the consequence, the pain, write down the pleasure, really feel it and be honest with yourself because that's the key. You gotta be honest with yourself because you know the truth can set you free. If you're honest about what the pain will be in your life, then you're gonna get that leverage to put yourself into action to do it. And then from there, it's just momentum. You get that momentum as yeah. you continue taking yeah. action. Yeah, and that's it's that's why it's so important to have a vision. A yeah. vision is so important because you know there's two types of motivation. There's push and there's pull. Push motivation, it takes a lot of effort. You've got to push yourself to do something, and that's only gonna be sustainable for a period of time. Eventually you're just gonna run out of energy. But pull motivation is when you're pulled towards something. It's when it doesn't require as much effort or energy on your part, on your part because you want to do it. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to be able, like the things that you're procrastinating about, why are you procrastinating about them? Like you don't want to do the job. We talked about pain and pleasure. So how can we make it so that you do want to do it? And so that's why it's important to have a big vision. And when you're procrastinating, you're thinking small. You're only thinking about the task at hand, but it's important to think broader, think big picture and have a vision for yourself. What can this, what can this goal help me achieve in my life. Yeah. So vision is very important when it comes to motivation and motivation is tied into procrastination. Okay, so having a vision for your life of what you can create, what is possible, and you gotta dream big. You gotta make it exciting. It's gotta be something so compelling, so juicy, that it, it's what makes you jump out of bed every day, excited to start your day, rather than just trying to hit the snooze button to stay in bed as long as possible because you're not excited to wake up that day. You wanna be able to be excited to get up out of bed. So having the vision is crucial. And once you have the vision, now all of a sudden you have a compass and you know the direction that you wanna go. Because without a vision, how do you know where it is that you wanna go? You're kind of like a lost, you're lost in, in the maze and it's very confusing. It's very hard when you have no direction in your life. So create a vision and from that vision, then you can set goals for yourself goals that are gonna help you to achieve that vision. So it starts with the bigger picture and then you kind of break it down. And goals are what are gonna help you to achieve the vision that you have for your life. Okay, so then how do you set the goals? Well, the goals you can set and, uh, based on, on what your vision is, of course, but it's important to not set these huge astronomical goals that are so hard to achieve. You wanna make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. 
So don't set goals that are just so hard to achieve. Set small goals, Set you can set some big goals, but make sure that it's within your reality to be able to achieve those goals. And then once you set your goals, then what you're gonna do is now you have to work towards them. And how do you work towards achieving those goals? So you have to break it down even further. That's where creating a schedule comes in, a schedule that you can adhere to on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, Jordan Peterson has a really good video that I'll link below about scheduling and, and goals and all this stuff. And he says that the important thing about a schedule is that it's not a prison. And so many times people don't like setting schedules because they feel like it's a, a prison where they have to do these things every single day and it kind of puts them in a box. And he's saying, no, that's not how it is. You want to set yourself up. You want to set up your day in a way that would be favorable for you. Something like, what would you enjoy doing every day? So the idea is to look at your goals and then try and create a day where at the end of the day you would say, yeah, this was a successful day. Like I enjoyed my day. So you create a day that would be successful for you, a day that you would enjoy. And you set that up through your schedule and you decide on what it is that you have to do. And yes, you're gonna have some responsibilities, right? So maybe uh, it's like 20%, 30% of your day is doing the responsibilities that, yeah, maybe you don't want to do them, but hey, it's only 30% of your day. And the remaining percentage of your day, you can decide what are the fun things that you want to do? What are the other things that you want to spend your time doing? So then you can determine, okay, what percentage of my day am I doing these things that I don't necessarily want to do, but I know I should do them. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's okay that I, I can get myself to do them knowing that there's another portion of my day that I can actually have fun and do things that are exciting for me. And it's also important that when you're scheduling yourself that you have to negotiate with yourself. You don't wanna be a tyrant. You wanna be able to negotiate with yourself and say, okay, like, yeah, I don't like doing this task, but how could I make this experience more pleasurable? How can I add more pleasure to this experience? So for example, when I was in university, this is the time I procrastinated the most because I hated to write essays and I had to write so many essays. And so I would procrastinate until like a few days before they were due and then it was crunch time. And so then I started to realize, okay, I've got to link more pleasure to this. I didn't really know about pain and pleasure, but somehow I knew to do that. And so I set myself up like, okay, I'll set up a nice office space, a nice little desk in my dorm. I'll put my blanket on my, on my lap. I'll have my favorite snack, my favorite sparkling drink, and I'll set myself up so I'm actually in an environment that I could enjoy doing this work. And so it actually made it easier to do the work uh, because I linked some pleasure to it. So there are ways that you can add pleasure to whatever task it is that you're doing that you just don't want to do. You just got to figure out how. Mm -hmm. And nowadays I don't really procrastinate much, but I do like, and that's because I link so much pain to, to not doing certain things. Like even cleaning the kitchen before bed because in the morning I don't want to wake up and mm -hmm. see mess everywhere when I'm trying to do my morning ritual. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd also say, just to add to that too, it also depends on how important, you know, your vision makes what you're doing today important, right? So for example, going back to the school example, if you're doing an essay, a test, you not, might not be motivated to do it because you're like, what's the point? How's this really gonna benefit my life, you know? But it becomes more important, that test or that essay, if you have a vision of long-term, you're gonna have this great career, and this is what the career is that you wanna have and how you wanna live this life. All of a sudden, in that context, now all of a sudden that test becomes important because how well you perform on that test is gonna to lead to what kind of grade that you're gonna get, and that grade is gonna to lead to whether or not you can get into that university and you know ultimately get to where you wanna be long-term. Mm -hmm. So that vision is really important. I think that that's kinda of where everything starts because yeah. Even in the Bible it says without a vision, people perish. We gotta have a vision, something that's compelling, something that's exciting, that could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Your vision can be unrealistic, it can be crazy, it can be whatever you want it to be. In fact, it's best to do the vision creation almost like when you're a kid. Because if you ask a kid, what do you wanna be when, they, when you grow up? They're gonna say, a race car driver, a fireman, an astronaut, mm -hmm. they're gonna be the president, whatever it is, they're not yeah. doubting themselves. They don't have the limiting beliefs that often you have where you doubt yourself when you're an adult. So dreaming as if you cannot fail, you know, what kind of life, what kind of home would you wanna live in, what kind of lifestyle do you wanna have, what kind of relationship do you wanna have, you know, what kind of body that you wanna have and what do you wanna do with your day, with your life? 
the more you can focus on it and feel it and make that real, now the goals that you have that might seem small, might seem insignificant, might not be that motivating, all of a sudden start to matter more. So you might have a goal that I'm gonna launch a product on Amazon. Maybe that's not that exciting for you, but in the context of where you wanna be 10 years from now, then that goal is incredibly important and you'll be motivated because that will, is what will lead to you actualizing the lifestyle and the vision that you have for yourself. Yeah. So with a vision, write that out as well. One thing we've done is create vision boards and uh, we even do dream building where you know for many years now we've gone to open houses in different parts of the world. We've looked at vacation homes. We've gone to mansions and pl places that are well beyond our means that one day we want to you know, achieve and manifest in our life, but it motivates us to experience it and go to these places and get a taste of it because that makes what we're doing right now today more significant and we're more motivated to do it knowing that that's where it can lead us is to turn that into reality. Yeah. yeah, so you have to tie everything that you're doing now into the big vision that you have for your life. If you're procrastinating, it's probably because you're thinking too small. You're just looking at the task at hand rather than looking at what it can create for you and how it can tie into that. So even if you're at a job that you hate, and um, you know you have this completely different vision for your life, how is that job gonna help you, support you to achieve that vision? It all fits together. That job is gonna help you earn an income, which you can then use to help you create that vision, or that job is gonna lead to a new opportunity. You know, you have to kind of get creative here, but it can all fit together, and that's what will get you excited. That's what will create the pull motivation rather than the push. So those were our tips for you. I'm not sure if there's any last words that you want to add here. No. Nope. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We know that procrastination is something that you, a lot of people struggle with us as well. We've all experienced it at some point, but it really does come down to understanding pain and pleasure and linking more pain to not doing and more pleasure to doing. And then also just having a very compelling vision for your life, the future, something that you can actually work towards that's gonna be exciting enough for you to get the job done. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. We'll be happy to answer them. And be sure to check out Stefan's channel, Project Life Mastery. I'll link his YouTube channel down below. He's got some amazing content on there. If you need help with mindset, he is your guy. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you later. Bye.